All right, Andrew, hit us with that spoiler cast theme song for this week. They've got a premise that you've seen a thousand times before. <laughs> oh, they've got oh my goodness. the ability to boost those box office scores. <laughs> Reviews can never take them down. Nostalgia lies on their side. <laughs> Go, go, Voltron knockoff! <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Nicely done. Thank you. I think it's the first time that the, the theme song has been the actual theme song <laughs> <laughs> for the movie. I don't a weird, know that the a weird were right, though. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, welcome to the Sif Pop spoiler cast where the theme song is different every week because we never want to give anything away. First, please make sure, if you haven't listened to the podcast review Mm. that we did of Power Rangers, that you do that first, because there are a lot of things we mentioned there that we're not going to retouch on, things we thought about the movie. This is more just a chance for us to mention the things we could not mention there. Uh, If you haven't seen the movie, we highly recommend you hold off and listen to this later. Go ahead and leave it in your podcast feed, but come back to it later. Not just because we're going to spoil it, but also because we're not going to take the time to make sure you understand what we're talking about (laughs) if you haven't seen the movie. (laughs) We are going to just assume that you have seen the movie and jump around to a lot of different things. So. Um, Power Rangers, uh, I think there's a bit here that we could spoil and talk about. So okay. anywhere you guys want to start as far as, you know, talking about specific things in the plot or the story or moments. We could do a moment by moment sort of thing. And then like whenever something we just want to talk about, we can go in more in depth than it. Well, lead us through what you're thinking. So the movie does start off with showing that they, something they never, I don't think they, they may have talked about it in the show, but I don't remember Zordon, who is the leader of the Power Rangers was the original Red Ranger. Yeah, so. and this movie makes uh, a point in the plot about that at one point it feels like he's almost using them to come back and be the Red Ranger. Yeah. Um, and that's a, that's a huge plot point uh, yeah. in the movie. So. so I don't know if you guys picked up on this or not. You know how I'm wearing the Green Ranger shirt right now. Rita was one of the original Green Rangers. So oh, okay. Something I wondered about that. They didn't do that in the show. But they said that in this. Did they say it or just that she was dressed in green? She had the Green Ranger uh, coin. Stone. Coin, the yeah. stone. Oh, which coin. was what was in I her. I guess they are coins. They yeah. call them coins, don't they? Yeah. But uh, they were, uh, that was what was in her staff. She was the original Green Ranger. Yeah. Which is super cool because in the show, she created the Green Ranger, but here she is the Green Ranger. So in the show, this character that is, that is the, uh, the bad guy. Character. Yeah, he's, another Repulsa. High, Repulsa. he's another high school student that goes yeah goes to school with them. But but in the original, she, Rita Repulsor or whatever created she was just the, a witch. She was a witch, and she created the Green Ranger. Yeah, she took another high school student named Tommy, turned him into the Green Ranger. Was he bad? Yeah, he he's was like an evil. For the first couple episodes, he was bad. But he's then like they, the Smurfette. Yeah, but then, <laughs> of the Rangers. But then they uh, they turned him over because he was as powerful as all the other Rangers. Okay. combined. Yeah, all, like, right. all five of them were trying to fight him, like just he, him by himself. Yeah. What about you? Mentioned the White Ranger too. What about the White? Is there a White so Ranger Tommy reference? As the Green Ranger eventually turns into the White Ranger. Oh, he becomes, and that's when he's a good guy. No, no, like oh. he he becomes even more powerful and transcends to the White Ranger. Mm. So it doesn't have to do with him changing sides. It just has to do with no, him no, no, yeah. evolving. He, he's the uh, the original Green Ranger. He Green Ranger becomes good. So confusing. <laughs> that's, going, what, that's why I'm here, Aaron. You're that's going why I'm down here. A Power Rangers rabbit hole that you can't come back from. Yeah, Help me! I'm so, falling into a lava pit. Okay, but here, it's okay. Here's because here. eventually I'll just transform into something else. Yeah. So here's something in spoiler cast that I can actually talk about now. <laughs> so in the show, they're called teenagers with attitude. In the show, they had an attitude. It didn't mean they had a bad attitude. TWA? Yeah. So they <laughs> they were the TWAs. So um, they were there was like the jock and the nerd, you know, but they weren't bad kids. In this... Well, they kind of were bad kids. No, I'm talking about in the show. In the oh, show, in the they show. Yeah. I see. They, they were like, I'm the nerdy kid. So they were just stereotypical kids that fit into oh. different, you know, cliques and stuff. In this movie... They're bad. They're actually teenagers with attitude. These are kids that are in detention and stuff. So they actually fulfilled <laughs> what the show promised so long ago, that these people would be teenagers with attitude. 
But that's also part of it's one of the most beautiful things about the movie, and we mentioned this, but is is that they each have to admit kind of who they really are to each other in order to really transform. And it's kind of a coming of age tale. Oh, it yeah. totally is. And I actually saw an interview with one of the actress actresses that was in the movie that said it called it exactly that. She said, When I found out that this movie was a coming of age story, that's when I really wanted to be in it. I got really excited to, to actually play the role. Yeah. Um and, and I, I like how it's it feels real the way that these characters flesh it out because some of them um, come of age and tell their story and are vulnerable with each other willingly and easily. And then a couple of them don't. I mean, and one, one girl in particular, I guess we could spoil it here. Um, you know, with her uh, sexual orientation, it's, it's very difficult for her to come out, um, and, and tell. And I don't think she ever friends. actually does. No. Yeah. And that's actually, a con. it's hinted at, I, but... I wanted to mention that as a con, it's a pro and a con for me. Um, a pro in this, there's a lot that's been said on the internet about this, you know, she's been called the first, First LGBT um, character, superhero character, it's the Yellow Ranger, right? Yes, yeah. Trini. Yeah, um, it, the first in this. Will genre. she transform into the Rainbow Ranger? Sorry, I had to. I <laughs> wow. had to. I just. I'm sorry. Can't believe you went there. <laughs> um, and and yet, I don't think that she ever fully becomes that that part of her character. In right. The movie. No. Yeah. And that was a con for me. I, I thought as long as you're going to go there, double down on it, like yeah. own it, go and, there, yeah, and, and, and make and make her that character and i i felt like the, aside from the the uh fire scene like they're sitting around a fire in the middle of the mm-hmm. woods or whatever and she actually find you know finally comes out with it aside from that but she doesn't somebody else mentions it and she never confirms yeah. that's right? true that's true she never actually says i'm a yeah. lesbian yeah. yeah but yeah um they kind of danced around it and they literally never come back to it ever again maybe they will in future movies or something like that yeah. but I, I felt like this was kind of a a weak introduction to that I actually side like of her. that though I like how a movie's like a character doesn't have to just say I'm gay, you know, just like just subtly hint at it, you know, because that's not how it works in real life. People just don't. Well, I'm I, gay. It can be a subtle thing, and then it just never talked about again. So. Sure, I, I I get that, but I also get what Phil's saying because in some ways it diminishes the theme because the theme was that they had to come out with these things to really be a unified team. Yeah. You know, it wasn't until. The, you know, the football star admitted that he actually is a failure. He feels like a failure, you know, that he could really be part of the team or that, you know, whatever that the girl admitted that she actually did the thing she's been denying doing or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I I read, I didn't read any spoilers before going to see the movie, but I did see that there was an LGBTQ character in the movie. And so as I was watching, I was like, I wonder who it's going to be. And about halfway through the movie, I still didn't know who it was. Mm -hmm. And then when she came out, I was like, okay, I guess, I guess, yeah, she's that. But then, like, I never thought about it again for the rest of the movie. And I guess I just wanted to see them do a little bit more. Maybe show some backstory with yeah. her, um, you know, talking to a girl at the high school that she goes to or something like that. And and, and getting more into, like, what makes her, uh, what's her, her struggle with that. And, Interesting. And, and yeah. I, didn't, I didn't really get a whole lot of that. Again, maybe they'll do that in future movies. But Another part about that campfire <clears throat> scene, whenever Zach starts talking about his mom, that was actually kind of powerful. It really for me. was. I it was really like, was. Wow, yeah, yeah. they are getting real with this, and I'm feeling some emotions. <clears throat> and a Power Rangers movie, I never thought that I would feel. And he, his character was great because yeah. he was very everything on the surface to begin with, yeah. and yet he was the one that actually led them down the real journey of, you know, telling each other. The yeah. thing, you know, he was the one that that pushed for you know, let's be honest with each other, and I, I thought that was cool. I really liked his character arc. Yeah. Um, so getting back, so uh, in, at the beginning of the movie, Jason, who is going to eventually become the Red Ranger, he's a jock who uh, is being in a police chase. He gets in a car crash. Now he's in detention. He's in home arrest as well. But while he's in detention, that's when he meets Billy, who uh, did they ever mention like if he had a specific uh He just said he's on the spectrum. Or something? On the spectrum. He's on the spectrum. Okay. So, yeah, he uh, incredibly intelligent. He's able to trick the ankle bracelet that Jason has on so that he's like, I'll help you with that if you help me with something. Cause my well, dad... this, is, this is after he slaps the bully. In the, not Billy doesn't slap the bully. Yeah, Jason slaps the Jason bully. Jason slaps the bully in the which face. Which I love that scene. It was great. <laughs> Did you just slap me? I know. Weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But um, then, uh, so Billy 
convinces Jason to help him with an experiment slash project that he's working on in a gold mine that's in Angel Grove, the city which this takes place. Same city in the show. How does that relate to the TV show? Did they find these coins in a similar way in like a mine or how were they given to them? They, they were actually just Zordon, if I remember correctly, in the show, Zordon was like watching Angel Grove and he just teleported them to him he's like i've chosen you so it was his choice not them finding him yeah that's right like like i said in the main uh the main podcast i watched the first episode and that's exactly what happens the okay the um so rita repulsa is like trapped in some kind of a box or something like that with her minions on the moon it's it's really really weird <laughs> awesome um, which and, goldar is one of yes and and uh Gold, Ast- goldar Astronauts, is the big gold creature that yes, she made which is different in the he, show. he looks completely different in the show okay i think it looks better in the show the astronauts actually find this thing and you know mistakenly open it and she after ten thousand years she's free and <clears throat> so uh zordon is basically handpicking these five they don't come to him he he actually extracts them yeah and then um and then he just gives them the abilities that they have so yeah. it's it's the show's a lot more on the nose this one i think kind of leads up to their being chosen in a much more believable way. Yeah, because in the show, they just have to push a button and then they're Power Rangers. Yeah. In this show, in the movie... It's a discovery they in the have movie. To, they have to yes. find it within themselves to become Power Rangers. They have to not only train, but they have to connect with each other. But they're already powerful. They just don't have their... Uh, the suits. Their suits. Yeah. See that Or was, the Zords. Or the Zords. Yeah. So they get they go find the coins, and yeah. then it's just kind of this cool thing, and then they're trying to escape this mine because they've been caught, and they get hit by a train. Which was crazy. Yeah. Because I was, in my mind, I was ready for the cliche, you barely make it over the tracks, Fast and the Furious style. They get hit by that train. <laughs> that, that was actually a moment for me where I exclaimed out loud. <laughs> Watching the movie, I was like, oh! Yeah. Like, I, I wasn't expecting that to happen. Yeah. So they all wind up back in their beds waking up the next morning and they've been hit by a train but they're okay and then all of a sudden they start discovering super they have superpowers yeah question how did they get back in their beds never knew (laughs) that seems a valuable piece of information who did that like yeah do their superpowers involve just like teleporting back to their you know safe space well in the show they can teleport but uh Never, Do you know what I'm saying? I, the, yeah, movie, I, I the movie 100%. has moments like that, yeah. you know, throughout the movie, and those are those how moments that I was talking about. Yeah. But even but, as a fan, I don't know how they did it because it didn't show them teleporting. It was just, oh, we're here now. And Cinema Sins because as Cinema Sins says because reasons. Yeah, you know, because reasons. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, but that you know, that's just one of those that's specific only, moments. Yeah, so they, that's not the only plot hole in the movie. They <laughs> wake up. They wake up back in their <clears throat> homes, and they're incredibly strong. Like. If they grab a door handle, they'll rip the door off just yeah. because they're not used to strength that they now possess. Or if they grab a sink, they'll break the sink in half. And, yes. and I tell you what, the, the part that in that that sequence of events, the one, my favorite one was when Billy confronts the bully. Yeah, in the in the hallway, and he. <laughs> I it's just so funny because like in, I think the way most movies would do it is the bully throws a punch that the the punch lands and you, and then he holds his hand and goes ow, uh-huh. ow. yeah but the fact that he head butted him He's, and then like knocked back I, I loved that it after was, trying to break his wrist I thought yeah. that was great too yeah, he was yeah. like why is his wrist not breaking you know because <laughs> yeah. you could tell he knew how to break a wrist you know yeah. like he was really doing something and then. And then he headbutted him and knocked himself out. I, and I like Billy was like, "Oh, oh no, 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 no!" He didn't want him to fall down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's such a likable. Billy character. was so good. He yeah, was, he was so, so good. He he was autistic, yes, but um, I, I felt like the whole time, like m- my worry was that he was going to be laughable, like where I felt like I was laughing at an autistic boy, and it didn't feel that way the whole oh, thing. No. Um, like I felt like the other characters were were loving him and, and like he's an adorable person mm-hmm. and then they became his friends as the movie and i felt like i was on that same journey with him like, absolutely it was i thought i handled that really well i think his portrayal of this character in the future could be seen as a champion for people with autism yes. possibly yes like this is somebody you can look up to you know he's a he's a superhero he has 
what some would call a disability and he is owning it and he is awesome. Yeah. So. And and how great to have a superhero movie. Maybe this has been done. I just can't think of it, but where someone has gone from disability to super ability. Yeah. Um, no, normally, I mean, you can kind of say Captain America cause he was like a super weakling or whatever, but he, he yeah. didn't have any kind of a mental or a physical ailment. Yeah. Um, uh, I want to give a shout out uh, to my friend, Jeremy, who, you know, cinema sins. Yeah. Uh, that's actually his book. Uh, he wrote a book called The Ables. Oh, wow. And it's about superpowered uh, kids with disabilities. Oh, wow. Really? Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. And uh, I'd highly recommend it. So, Well, I will definitely read that one. But he, Billy's character, his, his, you know, what he suffers from on a daily basis is the shining star in the movie for me because it is so unique. I, I don't see a lot yeah. of movies doing that. So then they get together and they're like, obviously, we got to do something. Although uh, the girl who ends up being the Yellow Ranger seems to just want to run away. Yeah. Um, but they end up going through some sort of underwater, you know, which that sequence was cool. I water. They go underwater, I underwater. <laughs> I liked it for a bit and then it annoyed me. Really? Yes. Huh. Because the effect they're trying to use that they're coming down through the water. Yeah. It was a cool effect, except it made no sense because all the air was also going down instead of like, take the time to make the world actually work the way it would have. Like, as soon as they're putting their hands up... So you were mad that the broken physics were broken? I was mad... No, 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 no. Okay. I was mad that my brain immediately, when everything in the shot is doing exactly what it would normally do, that my brain was immediately like, well, that's actually the top of the surface. Like, it didn't look like the like they were breaking through the bottom of anything to me. It just looked like the camera was upside down. Yeah, I you know guess, what I mean. Like I, it's it's just like because all the bubbles are going up. If you have something that works differently than they work, because it wasn't saying that everything was floating to the bottom. It was just saying they had to swim down there and break their way through. Okay. Yeah. So you know, it was just I don't know. That's just, I, I know that's a little thing, but it really did break my brain to the point where I was like, well, I could have shot this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> was, you know. So I guess a minor spoiler for Arrival. If you haven't seen that movie, just skip forward 30 seconds. But um, it, it felt like an Arrival type scene to me. So in mm-hmm. Arrival, when they do that gravity, gravity shift. shifting mm-hmm. thing, it, it kind of reminded me of that a little bit. And um, so I, I guess I just chalked it up to there's an alien ship down there and it's like really yeah. monkeying with physics and stuff. But Which there was. There was an alien ship down there. That's where Alpha 5 and Zordon are hanging out. And they... Zordon finds out that they have the coin, so now they are destined to become the Power Rangers. At the same time, Rita Repulsa's corpse has been fished up, and uh, she is collecting all the gold so that she can create the monster Goldar to find a crystal. Every single planet in the universe that has a life on it has been struck by one of these crystals, and that is what gives life to that planet. Guess where it's located? Underneath the Krispy Kreme. <laughs> At the Krispy Kreme. <laughs> Wow. The source of all life. <laughs> Which they've said, they said a couple times, Krispy, Krispy Kreme's the source of all life. Multiple times. <laughs> how do you get away with saying that multiple times in a movie? So, um, <laughs> Rita Repulsa, she's, the more gold she collects, the more powerful she becomes. And she is terrifying in the beginning. She looks creepy as all get. That's whenever the Rangers, they find out they have 11 days before Goldar is unleashed on not only Angel Grow but also the world, and so they have to train. That was a chance for a comedy with from Alpha Five because he's like, he's like, we only have eleven months. I, I, yeah, no, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, I meant eleven days. They're like, ah! yeah. <laughs> and uh, so they start training. They don't have the ability to morph yet because they they're not connecting to each other. So they're training. They're learning martial arts, but it hurts really bad. It hurts really bad because they have this hologram of putties which the putties look way cooler in the movie than they did in the show and uh they're just giant rock monsters so they're training and they're training but they're not connecting then one day billy finally morphs because he wants to stop a fight between them and then they all have this kumbaya session outside uh, around a campfire which is probably the scene, for some reason, it's the scene I think of most whenever I think about this movie is that campfire scene. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, because it's not really... When you think Power Rangers, you think fighting, you think Zords, you think action. But when I think about this movie, I think about that campfire scene. That's, whenever... the, mo- that's the movie we liked, though. That's the the movie that is those kids getting to know each other and yeah. figuring it out. That's the movie we liked. It just seems so real. Yeah. And uh, so 
after that, they have... Um, oh, after that, Trini is sleeping in bed, and then she wakes up, and Reed Repulsa is floating above her, and I got kind of goosebumps. That was creepy. Mm-hmm. That was really creepy. And Reed Repulsa says, I'm going to kill you all. I killed the the other rangers, and uh, you are no different. You can't even morph yet. Trini gathers them all together, says, hey, I was just attacked by Rita. They decide, you know what? We're going to go and fight a, her now. There was a little bit of a... I mean, apparently, Rita had a plan, right? The plan was to use the yellow ranger to, uh, like, for her to find out information and bring it back to her. Like, the, it seems like there was a... a a, a plot point that kind of got shrunk or something there where I th- here, do you know what I'm saying? Like it I felt like this, she was trying to turn her against them, but that never really happened at all. Like she immediately went to them and I think this is what she was planning and I could be wrong, but this is what I think she was planning. So Rita Repulsa knew at least one of the Rangers knew where the crystal was. So she figured if she attacked one of them, they would all attack her at once. How did she, she know be- that? And why, and why does one of them know? Billy ends up knowing. How does he know? I don't... How does he know? Yeah. Math. Because <laughs> <laughs> reasons. Because reasons, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They just showed... You know, I think I think a movie thinks that if you show a map and you have a guy putting pins and red, you know, string, mm-hmm. that he knows what he's doing. But that doesn't mean that we know that he knows what he's doing. <laughs> But uh, so Billy finds out somehow that the crystal is in Angel Grove and that it's underneath the Krispy Kreme. Sure, I'll, I'll buy that. The for source now. of life at Krispy Kreme. Of, Krispy there was Kreme also a whole training segment, like a, like a five minute training segment between the girls with donuts at yeah. a Krispy Kreme with forks <laughs> and donuts. This movie. This movie. It also takes the time when Rita gets to Krispy Kreme. For her to sit, sit down, down and try a glazed donut. Yeah. Oh, my God. She, she's actually eating a donut on screen. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's a fight between Zords and Goldar going on outside, uh. but we're just going to show you this five to ten second clip of Rita sitting in the Krispy Kreme enjoying a nice, uh. warm, freshly glazed donut. I mean, granted, I'm I could in, go for one, I'm gonna, but I'm just saying. I'm going to need you to refer to them as source of life. From <laughs> source yeah, of all life. Source of all life. <laughs> I'm going to go get myself a source of all life. Hertz is better anyway. <laughs> anyway, um, so they finally have the ability to morph after Rita captures them during that whole fight. She kills Billy. Like, mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be one of those things, you know, where Billy, like, they start doing CPR and or Heimlich. Is it CPR to bring somebody back from drowning? Or, or is it Heimlich to get the water out? I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, you do CPR. Mouth it's CPR. Mouth. Yeah. It's not Heimlich. Heimlich uh, is for choking. Okay, but you're choking on water. Anyway. Um, Can't so, choke on water. It's liquid. <laughs> you can totally choke. I choke on my own spit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I was with you, too. I was just like, okay, in three, two, two one, he's going to come back. To, and he didn't. He, he didn't. He, he died. died. Didn't, didn't happen for a few minutes, at least. Yeah. Here's so, my. Here, <clears throat> this is my main continuity slash whatever problem with the movie. Okay. <clears throat> I want to go back and watch it. I swear he was underwater for maybe 20 seconds. No, yes, yeah. there's no way you there's drown in no 20 seconds. You, there's no way you drown in that amount of time. Yeah. He was barely under, especially considering we saw a scene earlier where they swam under yeah, water exactly. for at least a minute and a half. Yeah, they were you way know? down there. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Because I remember thinking during the earlier season, oh, they must have like super lung, ca- super lung capacity because they, yeah. yeah. they were down there forever. And then he drowns in like 15 seconds. Yeah. I'm totally there with you. I was thinking <laughs> the exact same thing. Like, it, come it was, on. It was bizarre to have him die in the same way that they had discovered the ship. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, um, yeah, Billy dies and he's dead for a while. Yeah, they carry him all the way back to the So he's the dead spaceship. for at least an hour. Yeah, yeah. They get him back to the ship. This whole time, Zordon has been telling the Rangers, uh, you need to train in case I can't get out of this wall. I need to, you know, get a physical body back so I can fight Rita. And I have to wait for the specific time whenever I can cross some astral plane from death. Because Zordon is dead, but his consciousness has been uploaded to the ship. He's like, I'm waiting for this one moment whenever the dead can come back to life. He sacrifices his ability to come back for Billy to return. And he tells Jason, 
it wouldn't have made sense for me to come back anyway because there can only be one Red Ranger. Because at this time, Jason is the Red Ranger. They all stand around because uh, they've been trying to stand on these platforms for them to have the ability to morph. Finally, the movie has about 30 minutes left. They finally morph. They are now officially Power Rangers. They go get in their Zords. What what'd you think of the suits, by the way? Did you like them? The suits look great. Yeah, I, I liked them too. The suits look so good. They're very different from the original suits, but oh, okay. very modernized. Yeah. They I didn't like great. the fact that the girls had heels on their suits. You know? Oh, I didn't Did they? That. Yeah, they I had, didn't even notice that. And they also had the, the female breast armor, you know, to right. accentuate, you know, which is totally combat and effective, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time... You know the 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 the, uh, the material that they used and the actual design of the suits, like you know, it was like it kind of looked like the suit itself was alive in some ways, you know, because well, especially the way it grew on them, it almost it grew on them of, like a second skin. Exactly, I thought it was really cool. Definitely a step up from spandex, and uh, I thought it looked really cool. <laughs> I thought the action when they're in their suits worked so much better than the action in the Zords. I yeah. felt like once they got in the Zords, it just got, it was a jumbled mess for me. It yeah. was so much harder for me to stay with what was going on. Right. I agree. I think they should have spent more time out of the suit fighting not only putties, but in, okay, here's how. You mean how out it, of the Zord or out of the suit? Out of the Zord, I mean. Yeah, okay. So here's how it worked in the show. Every single episode followed the exact same premise. They just changed the monster of the week, but it was the exact same premise. So they would fight putties in normal clothes. Then a monster would come down, but the monster was the same size as them. They would fight the monster in their the suits. The suits. They would defeat the monster. Rita would get really mad up on the moon. She would say, make my monster grow. She would throw her <laughs> scepter down to the earth. The, the monster would grow huge. That's when they would get in the zords. They would kill the monster. Rita would be mad. Which, you watched the show. You've seen the show, right? Yes, I've seen several episodes. Did Rita have to go down to Earth every single time to get her wand back and then go back up to the moon? I don't remember that part. <laughs> no, no, but it was never shown. But for continuity's sake, she, every single yeah. week, Somebody would have to retrieve it. Somebody had to retrieve it. Some sort of like bowling alley device Ex that would, you know, yeah. roll it back to her on the moon. Exactly. <laughs> he's, he's right. That literally is the plot of uh, every single uh, of every episode. Every single one. Every like hunt thousands of episodes, they just change the monster every single week. But it was that <laughs> okay. exact same formula every single week. So, but they didn't really spend any time fighting in the suits in the movie. They went straight from getting in the suits, running to the Zords. They just had to fight the putties along the way. And yeah, it was really kind of, quick. yeah, yeah. And it was really quick for sure. Um, I also there was another thing that stood out to me as a distraction again because it reminds you that you're watching a movie. Uh, at, just out of nowhere, they get. When, I think it's the first moment they're in their Zords. All of a sudden, like the old school, go go Power Rangers. That, that, is, that exact montage is what happens in the show. Yeah, it's, like, but it's so distracting because it's like it's a throwback. What is, what is going on in this movie if right now? Like, if you've seen the show, that part was actually kind of cool because it's. They're, they're, but do you understand were, what I'm saying? I do. One hundred percent. It's a total there, distraction. There were people down the road again. Those people down the road from me that were almost out of their chairs when that moment happened. So like they were <laughs> yeah. clapping and jumping up and down. Because yeah. you turned into the ten year old. I know I keep getting older in the story, but you know that <laughs> the seven to ten year old kid. You turn into that kid. You know. Because they're lined up in the exact, sure. the Zords are lined up in the exact same no, order they I were in the it. show, and they're running parallel to each other, and you got that theme song playing, and you're like, I'm a kid again, yeah, <laughs> and it's great, and, uh, but yeah, it's totally different from the re tone of the rest of the movie. Right, yeah, you, you've got all this, this beautiful, uh, I don't know if it's called beautiful, but this good, this, this good techno kind of really interesting kind of, you know, beat going behind, and you know, it pulling you into the movie and then all of a sudden out of nowhere it's just like i'm watching saturday and morning cartoons or something had, they had some pop and some even rap songs and mm -hmm. stuff like that in the movie yeah they were cool they worked well um, but yeah it, it definitely i could see how how you totally pulled way. me out yeah it was totally different. they could have done a modernized version of the theme song yeah but or something yeah or save that for the end or i don't know it's i don't so there is a gold mine in angel grove I don't know if I ever said that earlier on. Well, the whole thing, the whole thing Rita's been doing the whole movie is getting gold. Is getting She's gold. She's been pulling it out of people's teeth, which was really creepy. <laughs> yeah, really creepy. And um, then she'll go to like a Jared's jeweler I or loved, something. I Eating love necklaces. That scene. Like and, she's actually swallowing the gold. Yeah. yeah. 
So then she goes to the gold mine, gathers all the gold out of the ground, and that's whenever she creates a weird... I, I didn't like this version of Goldar. In the, in the show, Goldar is like this half blue wolf character. What? A bipedal character, but he's covered in gold armor. Oh, interesting. And he looks really cool This was in the just show. molten gold. This was just molten gold. Yeah. And uh, so... He is now the big bad. He he's never the same size as the Rangers. He goes straight up to huge, mm -hmm. and he's bigger than the Zords, which must mean yeah we need a Megazord. Which yeah, and is that, was that in the TV show? Actually, yeah, Megazord yeah. was okay. So <laughs> in the I, show, I just got to tell you the way Megazord happened was ridiculous to me. I I thought it was yeah this maybe the silliest thing in the movie. I totally agree because in the show. The uh, Zordon explains, yeah, you can get in your Zords and you can fight separate, or you can become the Megazord. So right. the, in in the show, they know they can do that, right? But the fact that this happened without them knowing in yeah. these devices that they're obviously controlling—it's not like some yeah. sort of psychic connection. Yeah, they're controlling them with their hands. Yeah, and they had no idea that they came together or how to put them together, and yet somehow. They come out of this pit all together as a Megazord, and they're all going, how did that happen? What yeah. is going on? The fact that it happened by accident was weird. I, I didn't right? like that. I to, didn't like it. To be fair, in this show, they they um, are basically downloaded the information on how to how to use their uh -huh. Zords and stuff yeah. like that. So like the show doesn't really explain it either, but yeah, I get what you're saying. And then they go to fight Goldar, but they don't realize that each of them connect or is in charge of a specific part of the Zord's <laughs> body, like the legs and the arms. So they go to charge at him, but they trip, they, they trip which was funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. I thought it was funny. Yeah. yeah. And so then... Uh, they use the power move that they, they learned the early, move, earlier on in the movie. And they movie. beat the crap out of Goldar, because whenever it was just the Zords by themselves, Goldar was kicking their butt. Mm -hmm. He was kicking their butt. And, Although but, I did love that last stand. Where they that were was, trying to that fight That was the off. other part of the Megazord that kind of annoyed me, was here's this other thing that they could have done all along if they had just known. Yeah. But it, it took away some of the power of that previous scene where they're just like, hey, we're going to fight to the finish. You know, we know hold we're, the line. We're going to hold the line. We know we're, you know, we probably can't do this, but we're just going to do it. I think that last fight sequence really could have benefited from being a little bit longer. I, I felt like it was a little too easy to take him down once they got into Megazord. Like, I mean, they, there were a couple blows that didn't land and they kind of struggled a little bit to kind of get their uh, their footing. But then once when, once they figured out what they, the move that they had to do, then it was over. You know, yeah. it's like like one shot kill type of thing. I, I felt like it was a little too fast. Now, but. I didn't like the way the Zords looked. Megazord looked really cool. Yeah. And uh, he looked a little, he looked really Transformer-ish, you know? He looked a lot like Optimus Prime, but at the same he does time, in the show too. I mean, yeah, in the show too. But man, he looked cool. He looked really cool. And then uh, Rita Repulsa after Goldar's defeated in probably the most ridiculous part of the movie besides Krispy Kremes. <laughs> she jumps at the Zord Megazord and they backhand her to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> they swat her out of the air. Did she you goes, just slap her? I know, yeah. weird, right? Yeah, <laughs> which was a, a nod callback. to the bully at the beginning. Yeah. But <laughs> that was what, a great scene at the beginning of the movie too. What I was like, really? Did you really just slap her to the moon? <laughs> really? That happened. Sure it, did. It sure did. Yeah. So she'll come back, I'm sure, right? Yeah. So I don't know if you noticed, she got slapped, but her scepter didn't, which means they now have the Green Ranger coin oh. or the stone or the coin, whatever you want to call it. So that's how whenever. At the end of the, at the very end of the movie, you see them all sitting in detention again. Yeah, and they're doing the Ferris Bueller thing, you know, where they're like, "All right, we have a new student detention, Tommy." This was the one moment, Tommy. This was the one moment where I was like, "Okay, that must have been a Power Ranger thing," because I have oh, no clue what here's, just happened. Here's another thing. You know how at the very end of the movie, <clears throat> after they defeat Goldar and all the townspeople are mm -hmm. clapping at him sporadically throughout the crowd are the orig original cast of the show. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and I did not get that reference. But oh, really? I, I could tell by the people, the way that they were reacting down the row for me that, that they were actual actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You saw, Except you for saw... the one that just pleaded guilty to murder, right? <laughs> oh, Jason? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, he did, didn't he? <laughs> no, 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 no. Not No, he was in a different show. There's I been thought like... you said it was Power Rangers. Okay, there's been Power Rangers, there's been Power Rangers Samurai. I'm out. Been... I'm out. Yeah, too get, much, get too much it, explanation. Aaron. Yeah. But what I'm no uh, actually, 
No, I'm not going to say that. Never mind, because this is a family friendly show. Um, one of them went on to do a questionable form of filming. I'll <laughs> we say get it. it. Yeah. We get it, Andrew. <laughs> okay, we understand. All right. So, um, but he that was one of the original cast. But no, the guy who killed somebody, he was in a different version of Power Rangers. Okay. All right. I'll say that. He was definitely not there. <laughs> but no, the original cast of the original the run 90s of the show, version. the nineties version of the show, they okay. were all sporadically. You, I think in the foreground you see Kimberly the Pink Ranger and then Tommy who played the Green Ranger because they were the most famous. Um, Kimberly for me when I was growing up was my first crush. Anyway, nice. Uh, yeah. So seeing her, I'm like, hey, that's awesome. They're in their fifties now. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. People get older. I know. But the simple fact that they were teenagers when I was a kid and now they're 50, mm-hmm. I was like, why, why? When did that happen? Why? <laughs> uh, you stay locked in time. Exactly. You're that's not what, allowed to age. That's how I felt. The one but, the one story I can tell about it, the guy that played Tommy in the original show, is his actor name is Jason David Frank. He has three first yeah. names. Yeah. Uh, he was, I, I know. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, uh, he was the panel directly in front of us when we went to Planet Comic Con last year. So like when we went up to Kansas City and did a live horrible movie podcast uh-huh. show, he was the, he was in the same like I sat in the same seat as <laughs> the same nice. chairs. And, yeah. Like he he finished and then we exchanged words with him real quick and then we got up on on nice. stage and he and followed owns him, so. being Green Ranger. Yeah, he, he owns it, man. And I tell you what, the fans that were in that room were huge Tommy fans. Like they were like asking him questions and getting his autograph. Like they were all about him, and he loves so, it. Yeah, he eats it up. Tell me about the the post credit scene then, because it completely didn't understand it. What okay, so then? so they're doing a Ferris Bueller thing. They're like, okay, we have a new student in detention today. Uh, where's Tommy? Tommy is going to be the Green Ranger. Okay. So then they show, uh, and you know that from the old show, Tommy was the exactly. Green Ranger. Okay. Yeah. So like Tommy, which is a Bueller callback. Tommy, right, yeah. Tommy. But then they pan over and they show just an empty desk in a green jacket so you know that he's going to be the green ranger okay. not the white ranger yet okay so that's pretty much what it was and then something exploded okay do you remember at the very beginning of the movie whenever you find out why billy was right in that's detention? what I, th- I thought that was billy exploded his lunchbox again or something it was but what does that have to do with tommy the green ranger it was just showing that we're not going to show you who Tommy is oh, right, right now. All right, all right, all right. It's, it's so it's two things. It was two it, different. It was things. two different things. Okay, all right. Because they didn't want to show who, because obviously they haven't cast who Tommy's going to be yet, so they can't show just a random person. Okay, all right. And that's all it was. Makes sense. Surprised they didn't show. I thought there was going to be a post post credit scene showing that maybe Lord Zed was going to be the villain in Power Rangers two. They didn't show that, but that's okay. Do you think they'll make Power Rangers two? I hope they do. I really do hope they do. I mean, it sounds like it's been selling well, so, uh, you know, that's really... He, he, no. Here's the reason. You have such a good cast yeah, for exactly. Power Rangers now. I agree. Don't waste that. I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree, for sure. Yeah, I, I'd love to see these cast members again. Um, yeah. I kind of got, like, a Chris Pine vibe from Jason. Like sure, the, yeah. The lead guy. Like, he, he has that very um, in control of himself, very confident kind of swagger, um, if you will, that Chris But Pine can has. still be vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, really. When, when it needs to happen. Um, I loved Kimberly. The the girl that played Kimberly was really, really good. She's actually British, so I don't, I don't know if you guys knew that. Jason's was, Australian. Yeah, so. they were they were donning American accents I never noticed. Um, Did they, you catch? Like, half of them aren't even American. Are you mad that there's so many people out there that can pull made off an American Made in the accent? USA, guys. Come on. <laughs> well, get, the other, you're talking get your about materials a, in the USA. I think a the, show that was originally Japanese that was recast... <laughs> and they just reuse the footage. I don't think we can claim Power Rangers. That's going to wrap it up for Power Rangers. I like I said, if you're a fan of this show, which if you've seen the movie, if you've seen the movie, hopefully that's you've done that before watching the uh, spoiler cast. You know, um, but I, I'm curious to know, like, if we can get some comments of people who have seen the movie, if it hit the nostalgia factor for them like it did for me. And yeah, I would love to know. Uh, like I said, um, you know, I. I almost liked it more in the it was okay kind of thing. I think I gave yeah. it a C plus. I'm right um, there with you, yeah. So, you know, there's a, there's certainly a, a lot they need to fix, but the good news is it's fixable. Get rid of Krispy Kremes. I would like this movie <laughs> oh, a lot more. <laughs> my goodness, that it's was so bad. That was amazing. Th- this movie has one of my pet peeves when it comes to how police officers are used in TVs and movies and stuff like that. Um, there's the scene. It's the scene where she's at the jewelers. Yeah, yeah. Like he just starts firing on her, and she's not even holding a weapon. Like, <laughs> she's not even, like he says, "Put down your weapon," and she re- refuses, of course, and turns around, and he just starts unloading rounds Did into you, her. Yeah. 
Did you like, notice that cop shot a guy? He shot the guy in the store. Did you notice that? No. He shot the guy in the leg. He did? Yeah. I don't remember Watch that at all. the movie again. I swear. Cause, <laughs> no, I cause don't think I will. My friend. Because <laughs> I was sitting next to Jareth, who's been on the show before from All Tower Media. Yeah. Sitting next to him. He shot the guy in the leg. We looked at each other. Did, he, did the cop just shoot that guy? And uh, Yeah, because uh, he shot him. I'm, I'm sorry, Andrew. I'm not watching the movie again just to see if the cop shot a guy in the leg. <laughs> well, watch it's just it again. not happening. Watch it again because it may, it may not be a good movie. It's a fun movie. It's a lot All right. of fun. The, All right. The other plot hole that I wanted to mention is um, how does Rita know how to speak English? <laughs> There's so much <laughs> blah. So, like, uh, Zordon can pl- speak English because he downloads it. Yeah. Like, uh, um, Alpha 5 actually says, mm-hmm. oh, hey, that, yeah. that's prim- and that's in the movie. This primitive English language is in your banks. Just mm-hmm. go ahead and download it. He downloads it and he can speak English. Rita has no reason to. Maybe know because how. she's a witch. Maybe she <laughs> is able to. Because okay. reasons. Reasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's all. All right, we'll be back uh, next week with spoilers on uh, Ghost in the Shell. So we will see you then. So we will see you then. So we will see you then. So we will.